Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about the episode from season nine, The Outrage. If you're enjoying these videos, please do like, subscribe, and feel free to share them with anyone else you think might enjoy them. In The Outrage, it's a two-part episode where we find out that Harley Foster, played by the fabulous Hal Williams, um, is actually someone who is wanted as an escaped convict. He has come to the mountain, married Verdi, and they have a son, Josh, that they adopted, and then he has an older son, Jody. When he comes to the mountain, they clearly don't know much about his past, and it turns out at some point in his past, he unintentionally killed a man, a white man, and this has uh, earned him a stint in prison and has been on work gangs from which he escaped, seeing no other future for himself. Now, a racist sheriff has made a point of finding out who he is and, and what he remembers about him and is insistent that he now be recaptured and sent back to prison. Now, John, John Walton, thinks that this is very unjust, doesn't like the way that Harley is treated, thinks that racism is ridiculous, and does everything in his power to help clear Harley's name. During the course of John's research into finding how he can help Harley clear his name, John also encourages Harley to in a way, disappear, not run away, which Harley is inclined to do, but he sends him up to a cabin up on the mountain and then hides the specific whereabouts of Harley from not only this, this sheriff who is after Harley, but also from Epp Bridges. Epp's just trying to do his job. Epp is has known Harley, he knows Harley's a good man, but his hands are tied because he is an officer of the law and must do things by the, by the book. John asks for just a day or two to do what he can to help clear Harley's name. Epp goes along, but then there's a point where he no longer can. And he actually puts our father in jail for obstructing justice. I go to visit John in prison, bring him some cinnamon rolls from Rose and help pass the time with him for a bit. But ultimately John is released because Harley turns himself in. John goes all the way to the president and manages to get Harley a pardon, which is the last thing that supposedly President Roosevelt does before he dies. There are many subplots along the way because this is a two-part episode. There's a subplot with Elizabeth who has a horse. Uh, Daddy has done some work and in exchange, whoever he did the work for has given him a horse and a foal. And Elizabeth now has this horse, Molly, this mare that she is just totally attached to. Drew, her longtime boyfriend, is feeling left out because Elizabeth spends all her time with the horse and Drew is stuck on his own and Elizabeth never has time for him. There's some really cute things along the way with the two of them and that relationship. The other subplot going on is with Cindy. Uh, Cindy, all the other women feel that she is too delicate to do all the heavy farm chores that, that the girls and, and the rest of the family have grown up doing. So every time she tries to clean the chicken coop or clean the barn or milk the cow or hoe the garden, there's somebody there going, no, 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 don't do that. You go take care of Ginny and, and, and rest and you're too delicate. In the long run, at one point, Elizabeth's horse has an accident. Uh, we see here clearly a stunt sequence with a stunt rider who, crashes through this fence and brings the horse down. And as, although I'm not a vet, as a nurse, I guess, they figured it was, I could tell that the horse was injured enough that likely a broken leg and needed to be put down. I say, I can't do it because I heal. I don't, I can't take a life. 
Aaron's like, I can't do it. We know Elizabeth can't do it. And Cindy's the one who steps up and says, bring the gun because her father was in the army. So clearly she's been around guns and she's the one that puts the horse down. So Cindy has that moment of strength and shows all of us that she is not just a soft, delicate little flower that has to be cared for and can't handle anything tough. So bravo to Cindy. Drew and Elizabeth's storyline wraps up when Elizabeth, now with no horse, is, is unsure what to do. And Drew's like, well, there's someone else that, that really needs you. And she goes outside and there's the foal. And she's like, I can't. The foal's going to be sold. And Drew admits that he has bought the foal so that he can be closer to Elizabeth. And he says the two of them can help raise the foal. So it's a very sweet gesture on Drew's part to find a way to be closer to Elizabeth and share an interest of hers. All of the Walton men are away at war. Ben is in the South Pacific and he has a chief petty officer who is his senior officer who was played by Dick Sargent, who you might remember from Bewitched. Uh, so it was great to have him as a guest on an episode. This whole area where they shot the South Pacific was indeed the jungle area of the back lot of Warner Brothers Studios and in the area that actually bordered Drusilla's Pond. At one point when I was talking with Eric about locations, he said that when they had the POW camp uh, in when Ben is captured in later episodes, that he said that was actually in Drusilla's Pond. They had drained the pond and built that POW camp actually in that space where Drusilla's Pond normally would be full of water. So interesting tidbit on locations. John Boy is stationed in Paris working for the Stars and Stripes and Jason is someplace in France. John Boy's been trying to track him down but hasn't been able to find him. Somehow his papers are misplaced or something. John Boy does end up running into and meeting Antoinette, Tony, who Jason has been dating. And the two of them make a bet that about who's going to find Jason first via their contacts. Ultimately, Jason does appear, does show up where both of them are, and they have a happy reunion and celebrate finding Jason. A darling little ad lib that has been mentioned a few times, but I didn't realize this was the episode it was from, where we are at the table and John Curtis is in his high chair next to our father. And at one point, all of a sudden he pipes up and goes, I have new pants. I what? got new, I got new Pat. I see that. Who got your dog? Your mommy? No, from Pat, from, from Pat. From Pat? Where she live on the next farm? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. You can hear all of us kind of laughing in the background and I think that was all for real, uh, but they kept it because it was a, such a sweet exchange and worked well. And there was, there was a, it was so adorable that they decided to keep it, despite the fact that, I mean, Ralph just went right along with it. And that's kind of what we would do with things. You know, sometimes things happen and you just continue to play the scene. You stay in character and you, and you deal with it. So really sweet to see that. In the end, we see a final sequence as the train carrying the casket of President Roosevelt makes its way from where he passed away in Georgia back up to the Capitol and you see uh, people that have been waiting to pay tribute, to, to pay their respects as the train passes through those areas. And the Waltons have decided to go to a spot where the train supposedly is going to pass through in the early hours of the morning. And we all take that moment to pay our respects. And in a little bit different fashion, instead of our typical good nights, in this case, you just hear John say, Good night, Mr. President. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the episode from season nine, The Outrage. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.